Lighting a controlled fire was not always easy. Only 200 years ago, you'd rub a rock on steel to create sparks. Then the stunning discovery that combining certain chemicals can ignite fire. Putting these chemicals on handy little sticks, well, nothing quite matches that. The first matches left behind a nauseating odor, but today they're safer and the smell dissipates in seconds. To make matchsticks, this company starts with recycled paperboard, which is inexpensive and thick enough to support the weight of chemicals on one end. A stamping press partially cuts the paper, creating stems. As we see in this view from inside the machine, a die first cuts the stems, and then a blade slices through the sheet widthwise, making strips of 120 stems each. At actual speed, it's all just a blur, as the press makes nearly 500 strips per minute. Next, the strips move through a bath of hot wax. It soaks into the stems about one-third of the way up. Then they dry in an oven for 15 seconds. When you light a match, the wax slows down the burn speed of the chemicals, sustaining the flame for four or five seconds. Those chemicals are gelatin and silica to bind the chemicals to the stick, potassium chlorate and animal protein glue for oxidation, sulfur to fuel the flame, and two fillers. They mix 317 kilos of the chemicals in a large vat with hot water. This is enough to make the chemical batter for 25 million match heads. A conveyor runs the match sticks through the batter to coat their tips. Three rollers in the tank raise the surface of the batter, the first to ensure the front and back of the heads get covered. The third rotates faster to remove excess batter as the heads leave the tank. From there, the match sticks travel a distance of 365 meters while fans air dry them. The factory temperature is a comfortable 22 degrees Celsius, just what's required for the chemicals to dry and harden. These minerals are silica and red phosphorus. Add a little glue and you've got what's called friction, the material in the strip you rub the match against to make the head ignite. To make these striker strips, as they're called, a steel wheel rolls friction onto paper that's moving through a cutting press. This isn't the same paper from which they make the match sticks. It's a higher quality, non-recycled paper, suitable for color graphics, because many clients order custom printed matchbook covers. Another press with rotary blades slices through the paper, creating segments that are 10.7 centimeters long. That's the length of an unfolded matchbook. Now, back to the matchsticks. A worker arranges the strips into layers of two. A conveyor then feeds them into a machine that'll attach them to the matchbook covers. The machine performs several tasks. It cuts the matchstick strips into rows of 10 matches each. And it cuts the matchbook covers to their final width of 3.8 centimeters. The machine folds the matchbook covers over two rows, or 20 matches, then inserts one strong staple through all four layers. Next, a conveyor moves the assembled matchbooks to another machine that counts them and creates two side-by-side -side rows of 25, ready for boxing. This company also makes its boxes out of recycled paperboard. Each one holds 50 matchbooks and sells for about a buck. That's a dollar for 1,000 matches, or just a penny to light up 10 times.